Hello. How's it going? This is Daniel. Uh, just one second. How are you doing? I'm doing alright. Good. I'm working on getting the map set up. Let me uh, get you the URL. Now to try to make that map. <laughs> All right. Uh, I need to add a building and get some deployment lines and add a scenario. It's not letting me get into. Just showing up. Oh, I'm sorry. I um I gave you the wrong link probably. My apologies. No. Hey, that one probably works better. Yep. I decided to give you the base link, not the uh, not the appropriate not link. It's all good. Okay, now to try to get this stuff lined up. Move train. Really? Does this not have to be on top? Okay, well, I'm going to reset this because I did this in the wrong order. Oh, okay. Because it was putting the terrain on the top which is making it impossible for me to put the train underneath. Okay, so let's see if we can do this quick. This piece rotate, oop, oh my goodness. <laughs> The last uh, uh, game I played last week, um, I had a five-inch AOE out, and my opponent accidentally clicked on it and moved it across the board. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I was like, uh, whatever. Okay, so that's that. Now this comes up and around. It's at the 22-inch line. A little bit over. Give me one second. No worries. You let me know if you think any of this trains a 
little off from where it needs to be. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard if it's not like a preset thing. So yeah, I'm just trying to get it close. <laughs> yeah. Trying to orientate it as well as best we can. This is quite, kind of why I like just the, the random tables, but I know not every random table is created equally. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, this is 24. This was 12? Yes. <laughs> um, the prop ball needs to come down and rotate up. In there a little bit. You need to rotate 180. That looks pretty close to me. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Um, as I was silly and didn't have my conflict chamber lists up right off the bat, so I need to re add those. Just give me a second and we'll be good to go. How are you doing? How's your day? Uh, I mean, you know, it's another day. Yeah. COVID, you know, kind of ruins all the plans, so. Absolutely. I do this, uh, uh, it's like a, it's, it's um, and this week was the biggest event in the country. It's called Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. Almost like 2,000 people show up to it. It's up in Pennsylvania, and it was supposed to be this week, uh, but they canceled it probably like a month and a half ago. Yeah. So it's been a very long week because everybody just keeps posting pictures about, it's like, oh, I wish it was at Rag. It's like, so does everybody else just stop? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I hear you because that's the same sort of thing like Adepticon had that problem, Gen Con, like it's going to be that way for the next however long. Yep. And it sucks because we all like, we all miss that camaraderie and that, that fun of hanging out with. Mm hmm Sorry, Chad, I'm not paying attention to you right now. I'll be uh, checking in in a second. I'm way behind. <laughs> Runewood, Regna, Travis. Three points would be a here event. <laughs> there you go. Got the list. Um, let me do this quick. All right, so I've got my list, you've got your list. Um, oh, I have to put those in the opposite way. My apologies. Give me a second. Oh, I can do this right. Confirm my list. So we've got Zerkova 1 and Vlad 2 versus Fior 4 and Agathon. Yep. 
Vlad 2 versus Agathon. Very interesting. That's sort of what I thought the matchup would be. Yeah, I had that feeling too. This will be interesting. It'll be a very interesting yep. game. I have a plus one to go first. Um... Alright, so... Travis, roll a d6. I got a four total. You got a five. You get your choice, sir. Hmm. Um, I would like the table edge. So, going second and table edge. Okay? Mm -hmm. Which edge would you like? Um... I'm going to go with the top. You're going to go with the top. So I deploy in the bottom going first. Okay. I have bottom, Agathon. I'm going to take purple as a color. Because Infernals. So my chat's saying that they expected Zerkova versus Fiora. <laughs> See, my, my thought was, if I play Zerkova, then I don't have to worry about the assassination uh, from... As much from Agathon, but yeah. then it was like the whole like double reverse psychology thing. Where, well, he's gonna think I'm gonna play Zerkova, so he's gonna play Fiora. But then he knows that I know he's gonna play um, <laughs> Fiora. So then I'm gonna play Vlad, but then he's gonna play Agathon. So we ended up with the, the pairing I thought we were gonna get anyway. So I, I'm glad that I'm not the only one that was sitting there going, "My opponent knows too much. He's gonna do the right thing." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I will it take. Also came to the, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just gonna say I, it also came down to the, I'm just more comfortable with the Vlad. Too, so yeah, I figured we'll just go with it. That's a, that's a good reason. Uh, I'm gonna take the as much as I don't want to. I'm gonna take the Pathfinder objective. Mine is Observatory. So the remove stealth. I will get deploying. Okay, so my gate's not final placement yet, but that's uh, a thought process on it. Um, okay. That is, at the moment, is not in the cloud. And I am going to ambush one of my units of cultists. I'm going to ambush the purple unit. going to be interesting. My goodness, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Um, so before we get too far into this, do you have any questions about my list? <laughs> I, have, I don't even know where to start. Uh, like I said, I'd only played, this is my third game against Infernals, and yep. the other times it was uh, the other two casters so i'll give um, you a quick breakdown then okay. so agathon has um uh, let me go to go to war on my phone and then i can tell you so agathon has a couple of unique things that they have 
uh, that makes them definitely different than other Warcasters. Um, mm -hmm. For one of them, they have a once-per-turn ability that when a friendly faction non soulless warrior model within 12 inches of it dies from an attack from you, I can immediately cast a spell without spending essence. Um, so that gives me things, uh, any number of my spells, there's no limit on the cost on it, it's just I get a spell. Um, Agathon can collect souls within two as per every one else of them. Uh, Agathon has two one inch melee attacks that do a point of damage to living models. It cannot hurt non-living models and it has dark banishment on this attack. So I can uh, place you d6 plus three inches of your current location. Um, Agathon has a spell called Censor, Censure, which uh, gets rid of your upkeeps in uh, their control area, which is 18 inches. And you can opt to keep any upkeep spell in play by suffering D3 damage. You can't transfer or reduce it. And I heal a point of damage for each uh, damage caused by it. I can only cast it once per activation. Uh, Curse of Shadows, uh, which is range 8, uh, minus 2 armor, cannot make free strikes, and I can advance through you. Uh, Dark Fire, which is a 2 cost, range 10, pow 12. I collect the souls, 4 models destroyed by that, um, regardless of proximity. Uh, Dark Seduction, which is a range 8, uh, 3 cost, take control of target non enemy, or target enemy non warcaster, non warlock warrior model, make a full advance, followed by a basic attack, and then it expires. Uh, can't be targeted by free strikes can only uh, cast it once per activation, can only be affected by one model. I have Hellmouth, which is probably one of the more dangerous spells on Agathon's spell list. Four cost, mm -hmm. range eight, pow 12, pull everything within three uh, directly towards it, pow 12 on the three inch AOE on top of it, and then RFP'd. Uh, teleport, so I can be placed current, uh, completely within six inches of my current location. And then Tether, which is an upkeep that I put on one of my Warbies, or on one of my Horrors. And when I move Agathon during my normal movement, that Horror can advance three inches directly towards it. So that's the spell list. Right. <laughs> it's, it's a hell of a spell list. Um, yep. My feat makes spells you cast increase the cost by one. And while in my control range models all models yours and mine gain an additional die on their ma magic attack and magic attack damage rolls and I choose the die that gets removed so it's the high die for you it's the low die for me and that lasts for a round so One round oh my god so it's a lot of lot of crazy effects All right. So that's that's Agathon to the nutshell. I do have um, counter charge on tormentors. I have hazards from um, desolators when they come into play, and then soul stalkers. I collect their souls um, within four inches of. I believe you do not have any void archons, or you do have void archons in that list. I have two. I have two void archons. In so the void archons prevent my soul gathering, except. If I kill them first, within whatever their range is, which I don't recall what that range is, I know it being long. So yeah, if you feel feel free to ask any questions um, about my stuff, I'll be glad to help. I don't want to try to got you. Um, the biggest um, thing is the revelations of outer darkness, which is the you kill one of my warrior models, I get to make a spell, and so I can cast a dark fire on your turn. I can cast a hellfire or hellmouth on your turn. I can cast a teleport on your turn. So there's a lot of variety and craziness that can come from that spell. Or from that ability, not to say that spell. That's the biggest thing that's probably going to be like a gotcha, is um, that ability. Yeah, I don't even know how to like... I don't even know if you can really prepare for that. No, it, it's so. super hard. Because it's like, um, some people have 
I normally put a wretch to give Agathon stealth, and people are like, I'm just going to kill your wretch. Then it's like, I cast teleport. And your whole plan just falls apart at that point. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is my base deployment. I have Nasia yet to deploy. Um, gate, are you still fine where you are? Yes, the gate is still fine where it is. Um, my Umber Guardian is not in play, so it can come mm -hmm. in on any ranged attack on uh, one of my models, and it has Shield Guard as well. And then I have the cultists that are not deployed as well. Played against the gate once. What's the range on it? The gate has a 12 inch gun range, rate of fire 2. It mm -hmm. um, has a 4 inch AoE, so it can shoot and drift like 18 inches. Um, 20, 20 inches max threat, but it normally shoots 12. I'm also going to make sure it's in the right spot. It should be base to base with that cloud rubble thing, but not in it. And it can see through everything. It has um, ghost shot and eyeless sight. Mm -hmm. So that force in front of it is not going to prevent it from shooting. So effectively it can shoot that 21 inch line. My math doing that right. It's 9 inches to there, 21, yeah, 21. And I'm just going to prepare two ring sizes right now for my auras because that's the two that, or I've got three auras that are primarily in play. I've got the Gates 5 inch aura, Valens 10 inch, and Regna's 10 inch aura are the three auras I mainly deal with. What is the gates thing? The gate has three abilities it can use. Um, one of them is the five inch one, and the reason that is is I can choose a model within five inches and place it completely within two inches of its current location. So it's like a telekinesis uh, for a soul, and I can only place a model once per turn with that. I can only place one model. So that five inch aura is if I have a, um, a tormentor, say at the 20 inch line right here, I can TK it two inches forward effectively, get a world at two inches forward to the 22 inch line. And so that's what that five inch aura is. That is my normal deployment. Everybody else is 80. Okay. I'm uh, grabbing these models out of the center so that I can deploy them properly later for my summons. So how does that how does that work? So my summon that, that was the one thing I, 
Yeah. Sure. So my summons, um, there are two effects that cause my summons to work in certain ways. Um, my masters, so at this point it is um, Agathon and um, Regna can summon in horrors. To do so, they have to pay the essence cost of the horror. So for the heavies, it's four. For the lights, it's three. For the forboder, it's one. When they do so, they get to place um, the horror into play. Now, it, they differ on the two models, and I'll go through that in a second, but they pay that cost. The gate says if I'm within eight inches of the gate, that cost is reduced by one. So I can summon a heavy in for three, a light in for two, and a uh, lesser in for one. The, um, actually no, reduce the number of essence points summoning by one. So I can summon an A for Boda for zero. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. For Agathon, he ha or it has to sacrifice a marked soul. So the marked souls in my list are as follows. Um, it's Vlad to uh, decaf. Um, Nisia up here is a marked soul. The three wretches, the one, two, and three wretches are marked souls. Yep. Uh, Roger next to Agathon is a marked soul. Eilish next to Agathon is a marked soul. Valen south of Agathon is a marked soul. Orin midwinter is a marked soul. The hermit, Regna, Lord... Uh, uh, Lord of Ash, Ale, and Runewood is, and that's it. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 marked souls in this list. So when I summon with Agathon, I pick a model within 12 inches of Agathon. Mm -hmm. I center, or I, I place the horror so that the base size of the model I sacrifice for it is underneath the base. So I can effectively place like a Tormentor on top of Nisia here. Um, that can be in front of her, it can be centered on it, I can back it up. I just have to make sure that her entire base is underneath the, the horror I summon. It can um, move but cannot attack that turn, it loses its combat action. Um, so that's how that works. Regna doesn't have to sacrifice a marked soul to do a summon, but she can only summon in lessers and lights. Okay. So I can get a Forboder, a, um, a Lamenter, or a Shrieker. Does that make sense? We're going to go right there with Nisia. I am done with my AD. I need to fix a couple of my horrors because the ones that start and play start with full essence.
Oh God. the doom reverse <laughs> yeah units are the only thing i don't like about deploying on war table everything else is amazing units are the only ones where it's like Ugh, it sucks <laughs> yeah. if there was like a mass like i could just select all of them and move them yeah that would be pretty cool i but, agree mm, I, I played two i tried playing two games on vassal and yep. then i played a game on this and was like oh it's so much easier to do. <laughs> yes. The, I am impressed at um, how good this app is. Yeah, and it's all in a web browser without like a separate application. That's really yeah. Cool. Sure, let's try that. Okay, excellent. Um, Best of luck, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you had said you had the Isla Sight one. Yeah. Just make sure that I remember what it is. All right, best of luck. Um, yeah, good luck, have fun. You too, absolutely. All right, I am going to start with my maintenance phase. In my maintenance phase, my gate, if it has no souls, it generates D3 souls. And so it gets a soul. Bonk. Um, going to control phase. I have nothing to allocate, nothing to upkeep at the moment. Uh, main, or, uh, actual activation phase. I w um, just so that you're aware, my theme force bonus is turn one, I don't have to pay tithe. Mm-hmm. And all of my solos gain reposition three and ambush. So those are the three benefits I have. So I'm actually using all three benefits. Um, I'm going to go with Roger first. Roger's going to move his six inches. Um, I'm not going to turn him around, but he is facing directly towards Agathon. He's going to cast Harmonious Exaltation and then okay. repo three inches forward, and then he's going to reface the way he's facing now. Yep. Much easier than trying to twiddle a little dial thing to move him around. Correct. And because he's within that 10 inch circle, he can walk through the gate there and walk through Agathon like he did. Don't move you. Let me spell harmonious wrong. Okay. Um, so now uh, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Agathon. Agathon's going to cast Tether onto the Torment. Oh, uh, no, Agathon's not going first. Oh, my goodness. I completely almost screwed that up. Um, Wretch number two is running first. My goodness. Uh, not entering that Burning Earth. <laughs> Now Agathon's going to go. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I almost screwed that up. Um, Agathon's going to cast Tether onto the um, Tormentor next to to it, to them. Um, Agathon is then going to... Uh, so that costs one from Harmonious. Harmonious. Yep. And then Agathon's going to spend three going down to five Essence to summon a Desolator on top of the foreboder here or not the foreboder the uh this Rich. model yeah this model <laughs> we know what we're talking about yeah. um so summons right there on top of the wretch uh when that model comes into play it spawns a four inch aoe on top of it and so boom there's my hazard so hazard bad um it comes into play with one essence uh agathon is down to eight essence uh, Agathon's going to advance forward its six inches. It's 
right there. Uh, the tormentor is going to move three inches directly towards it. Mm -hmm. uh, approximately there. Um, Agathon's going to then spend two, going down to three essence, to teleport six inches. So Agathon is up there. Uh, what is the max threat <laughs> on a feeded Doom Reaver? How far can it charge? So base is uh, 11 with... Um, my theme benefit of apparition it goes to 13 and then I get plus 3 for a total of 16 16 and that's 16 yeah. with the melee range that's yes that's including the 2 inch reach perfect so I'm a point one out of that one guy nice alright cool beans uh, so Agathon is done because Agathon has spent all of its uh, stuff that it appropriately needed to spend all right, so then um, we're going to go with that Tormentor. That Tormentor is going to run 10 inches. Uh, tormentor can't go yet. Do the order of activations right. Valen's going to run. That's good enough for Valen. Uh, now I'm going to do uh, Dumbness with the Tormentor because now I can run through my own models again. Tormentors to there. Uh, 16 inches. Soulstalker is going to run. If you want to put... Soulstalker can run 14. And you cannot see through clouds with that, and only one unit can get it. Four of them would go into it. That feels bad. Feels bad, man. Okay, I'm going to try to stay outside the 16 of the ones I think can see me. <laughs> I don't think you're going to burn your feet top of one, though. Um, so we'll go there. Uh, Regna is going to advance forward six inches to there. She's going to uh, cast and summon. So she's going to cast Deceleration. And she's going to summon a... Oh, goodness, which one's better in this case? Um, she's going to summon in a Shrieker. That Shrieker needs to be... So for her, when she summons in, the, the, the whore is base-to-base -base with her. Okay. Uh, she's then going to reposition three... That feels greedy. That feels less greedy. Uh, so she's there. Yep. Uh, we're going to go with the Hermit. Hermit's going to advance forward five inches to there. Uh, it is within. Um, range for the pulse for essence. So I'm going to give essence to Agathon. I'm going to give essence to Regna. And I'm going to give essence to uh, the Shrieker right here. And then we'll advance three inches. Uh, my Forboder over here is going to run. Uh, the Shrieker is going to advance its six inches. I need to make sure it's six inches, my apologies. 
add the list, add a shrieker, shrieker is speed 6, add a desolator to agathon, okay, uh, so it's going to vent 6 inches to there. Um, next, I'm going to run this arc node, I'm going to run it not touching that fire, oh wait, I have flight, I don't care. <laughs> um, I'm just going to run into the fire because I have flight. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, Nisia. There is a model 19 inches away from me. I'm going to advance directly towards that model 19 inches away from me. So right there, I have a model that's 12 inches in front of me, and I move 7 inches. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot that model, number 5, yep. with my AoE gun. So I mm -hmm. am a 7. Mm -hmm. That's 13. So I hit with an 11. So if I select that model, I think this is the that guy was just too close to her. Um, so I'm gonna put a three inch ring out. I get those six models. Fuck. Yeah. They're armor mm -hmm. 14, right? Yeah. Okay, so, and do they always have tough? Yes. Okay, so the center one's gonna have a tough check because it's a power 13, so I need eights on the rest of them. So I'm gonna roll all of them, and then we can figure out toughs after that. So I'm okay. gonna do number four in orange. I need a eight to damage them. Uh, do not damage them. Number six, need an eight. Doesn't damage that one. Number six blue, need an eight. I get number six blue. Number five blue, I do not get unit leader blue. I do not get, so I have number six blue and number five orange. All right. First tough roll, tough. Yep. Number five, and second tough roll. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? <laughs> that happened. I like the whole game. <laughs> that happened. That was cool. So those two models are knocked down, correct? Yes. Okay. That was impressive. I was hoping to get some souls there. I'm like, this is the easiest souls I have all game. <laughs> um, I'm going to reposition three with her. Man, that was the what I assumed was the easiest souls I'd get all game. <sighs> I can't believe that. Two tough rolls in a row. Well done. Well <laughs> done. Uh, I'm going to run Mr. Uh, Eilish here. He is not touching that rough terrain. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to see that at all. Um, I will go next with Runewood. He said 16 inch max threat. Oh, that wasn't a trap for him. Okay, Runewood's just going to run up to there. Uh, the Wretch is going to run up here. outside that 16. Wretch number one is going to run into here. Uh, blue cultist unit uh, is just going to run. Alright, so that's that. So I believe all I have left to do is the gate, uh, my desolator, and my other cultist unit. So my desolator is going to come outside the cloud. It's gonna go right there outside the cloud. So now this wretch can die. Um, we're going to run Orin's unit. They have a 12 inch move.
12 inch, not 14. So all of those guys are now placed, and then I will go with my gate. My gate's going to spend one of its souls to, uh, actually before it spends a soul, it's going to try to shoot um, that orange unit. Um, I'm going to make my aura range 12, and then I'm going to add a widget called a laser, and the laser is going to be 30 inches. Fix yourself. I'm going to target that guy right there, okay. and I'm going to put a widget down, deviation widget, boom, 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 on the intersection of those two lines. This is the easiest way I've found to measure a range. Something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to deviate a 4-inch AOE, uh, and so bonk, can go max. It's going to land there and not do anything. Um, cool with that. Delete the widgets I put out. Make this aura back to five. I'm not going to shoot a second time. I'm actually going to use the soul to TK a model. I'm going to TK the Tormentor. We'll put the tormentor. So they have 13 no feet. And uh, six. One unit can have 13 no feet. The other ones are 11. Yes. Okay. I am cool with that. Um, so I have activated everything. Everything is in play. It is your turn, sir. I wouldn't normally tithe, but I do not have to first turn. Yep. It is good for yeah, your act, your end of your turn, correct? Yep. Yep. After everything is done, then I tithe before scoring. Okay. Man, mm -hmm. killing six Doom Reavers turn one would have been so good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize. I was like, she's probably got a gun, but I didn't realize it was Avery. So. And I think you were exactly opposite me, and that's the only reason it worked. Okay. Um, so, apparition. Yep. Whatever I do is not going to work. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so these guys are going to operate. Mm -hmm. Had any the two experiences I had with Infernals, it was not. Um, did not go my way in any way, shape, or form. So if you're not used to them, they're gonna pull all sorts of tricks on you. Okay. All right. Looks good to me. So many things that don't care about clouds. I can put most 
most of my list does not care about a cloud. Yeah. Oh, and just to make sure, because I noticed it, I'm not sure if you've noticed it, the burning earth in the left zone is a yep. rubble as well. Yep. Okay, good. I didn't notice those were rubble right off the bat, so it's like, oh, interesting. Oh, it is. So that, that produces not only the burning earth, but also, like, obviously Cub walking away, take fire damage, but it also produces a cloud, too. It's a cloud. So the burning earths are clouds, and mm -hmm. you take fire unless you're flying, and it is rubble and rough terrain. Okay. All right, so it's rough terrain and provides cover while completely within it. Okay. And then um, we should have talked about it. How do you want to play the acid pool? Is it the full template or just the that, water part? So the way that I... Uh, in the last game I played just to make it so much easier like if you touch the template that you're in that thing so like Perfect. as long as you're fully within the trench you're within the trench you don't have to be within like the actual like I think the trenches outsides are correct it's just making sure like the forests and everything else everyone yeah. plays in the right way yep we're 100% on, on base with both of those okay alright um yep so Vlad's gonna go first Okay. He is going to spend two focus arcane might. Okay. Uh, he's going to spend Let's see. Um Yeah, he's going so he's going to walk forward. Mhm. Mm Turn slightly this way so I can see. Mhm. Mm How do you, oh, RSIs, there we go. Okay. Like it. Um, he's going to spend two to put um, Hand of Faith on Destroyer number two. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. And then he's going to spend two. For wind blast. Okay, so we are. I'm just gonna make sure I'm got this. So, you had two for arcane might, two for hand of fate. So that's four, and two more for wind blast. So you're at so one focus. Six. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna put that. You hit my hazard, or the burning rubble. Put it right here. Perfect. So the burning rubble's gone. Uh, I will get rid of the train. Bonk. Oh, I didn't get rid of it. I clicked the wrong button. My apologies. Bonk. And Windblast has now gotten rid of that piece of train. Um, the... Uh, he's So he's done then. Mm -hmm. um, the orange unit is going to activate. Yep. Um, one guy's going to sacrifice his combat action, stand up. Mm -hmm. Another guy will just walk, um, but they're going to run. Okay. So he's going to come in here. It's always amusing to watch a whole piece of train just go whoop. <laughs> yes. I will make my command check. Okay. <laughs> 
Are they speed six? They are speed six, so I am way too far. My bad. No worries. Doom Reavers in the face! Uh, just so you're aware with Nasia, she has two melee weapons, uh, two half-inch melee weapons, and uh, quick work. So she can shoot if she kills something in melee. Alright. I guess I'm just... I really don't know what to do anymore. Uh-huh. It is a good plan to just dive at me as well. <laughs> Like, that is going to be a turn of pain for me. Yeah, because right there, if you move, like, just so you're aware, I could move to that and attack both of them, which is fine. But if you're going to put another guy there, you can prevent me from shooting if you put another guy to prevent that. Because if I'm engaged, I still can't shoot. Yeah, now I, I'm going to have a very hard time shooting out of that. So I'm just making sure on your page you don't see a unit of orange ones sitting there still. Uh, no, everybody, all all six of them have moved. Interesting. I'm gonna refresh my page. <laughs> hey, look, they've moved now. <laughs> there is totally a second like stationary unit that was really confusing me. <laughs> all right. Um. So the unit of Turnians is gonna activate. Yes, sir. We're gonna walk forward. So, um, so the lead Doom Reaver. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, the lead Doom Reaver. Number two and number three are going to get clouds on them. Two and number three? Yep. And then what do you mean by lead one? So the... Oh, the, the leader. The, yes, the star. Yeah, leader two and three. Okay, perfect. Um, so it's just going to be easier to... Move them, then place the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes. I totally get um, you. Uh, so, set on that. Go ahead and also just run. And I'll put the I can put the three inch widgets out while you're doing other okay. things. Yeah, once you approve them, I'll place the widgets. Well done on that placement though between one and uh, the leader and two. Like that that's <laughs> <I've been> <laughs> that's right on the spot. I'm I'm impressed. Like I know that they give you the numbers, but that's still Really impressive. Okay. So the uh, Colton Lord is going to run, mm -hmm. or he's going to walk. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just no matter. Um, he's going to go ahead and throw a cloud on number five. Sure thing. Absolutely. Okay. Um, 
Next, the destroyer is going to go. This first one, he's going to run. He's not really going to care about the crew. Uh, the next one is also going to run. Mm -hmm. This void archon is going to go ahead run over here. Four is gonna run, you know, waddle up really. Um, <laughs> you go right there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Golden Lord's gonna activate. He's gonna walk up. Mm hmm. He's going to put a cloud on. I always call him Bobby. Bobby Boucher. <laughs> um, so he's going to get a cloud. Uh, Void Archon is going to go ahead. Come up here. The Hedgehog is going to go ahead and he's going to run. Green is gonna activate. Mm -hmm. So he's that's the one that yells, right? The shrieker. The shrieker that... prevents spell casting and prevents orders. Five. 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 So they're just gonna. Not really at all. You're gonna run. Why not? Mm hmm You have gunfighter, right? I do have gunfighter with him, yes. I was uh the last couple days I was like, alright, I'm just gonna like study up on as much as I can about Infernals. And all I did was, I learned a little bit, but mostly I just stressed myself out. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you, hey, you've got most of the abilities, so like, it's not that you didn't do them. Okay. Uh, Turnians are going to move up. Throw out some more clouds just in case. So we're just going to go with evens two, four, and six. Perfect. I'll probably forget the other side. Is it like 1.7 or something like that? Um, like 1.8. I'm I'm not. I'm mostly looking at the uh, the front arcs. Um, sure. I'm placing it right there. Yeah, so. 1.8, 1.7. I think it's somewhere in that area is that math for it. I'm fully. I'm trying to give you like, a, like a tough decision on what side you want to ambush on. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. He's gonna move up right there, uh, and then that would be everybody. All right. So it's over to you. Turn two. Oh, you've given me a very interesting conundrum. AKA, do I just go for this assassination run right now? <laughs> yeah, uh, I realized after I moved Vlad, I was like, I should have moved a destroyer there first. A <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh goodness. 
because I can totally get a tormentor onto you. Is a tormentor enough? Unlikely that it is enough, but I think it is my plan to do so. All right, so um, my goodness, this is gonna be like a hell of a, a hell of an assassination run. I lose so bad if this fails. Uh, gate generates D3 souls. Gets three. Nice. There's a D3 option? Yes. Yeah, so if you click the die and you actually click the this the actual die, um, it brings oh, up oh. A, a cool grid that you can actually get your tough checks. You can get your um, like that's a no tough. Mm. Okay. It, it's There's a lot of neat options hidden inside that grid. In addition, you can actually select your role to be uh, your name. Uh, which is oh, really neat. Cool. So, like, when you're rolling, you see now I rolled a nine, and it says my name. Mm -hmm. So it helps break the uh, the monotony of that grid up. Yep. Plus the attack damage damage in column. That's so so much easier. Correct. <laughs> Correct. I wish I wish those were in, um, like you could set the numbers, the four rows for it. That would be really neat. Like I want this one, I want this one, and I want this one. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so 17.6 away. I did not mean to move you. So 17.5. They can run 12, which means I can get Curse of Shadows and can get a couple Dark Fires into you. Check, check, and check. Man, this feels risky. All right, we're going to see how the beginning goes and then work out the next part of it after that. So I can still plan around it. So um, Regna is going to take four damage to go to Essence 5. Um, okay. Agathon is going to kill Cultist number 2 in the blue unit to get nine Essence. And then it's going to upkeep... Um, Tether for one. Totally agree with you, Jay. Just responding to my chat as well during this. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Order of activations. Uh, when do I need to pick my objective targeting thing? Because if I have to do it now, I'm going to pick that tormentor. I forget exactly when I have to do that. Um, I believe it's fuel cash. Fuel cash. During your control phase, give Pathfinder. Yep, so right now I'm going to give um, Tormentor uh, Pathfinder. Okay, is there anything else I have to do during my control phase? No. Allocated, upkept. Yeah, everything else is is very much set. Um, I missed the point. Uh, no, I believe ambush is at the end of my control phase. End of my control phase. Um, let's make this interesting. I will ambush. Deployment lines. Obviously, their facing's not fixed yet. Yeah, no worries. As soon as I had moved the blue unit, I don't know if you'd heard me like audibly sigh, but then I remembered you had ambush units. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the thing where it's just like, oh man, I forgot this thing exists. I I, usually when I have ambush models, I forget they exist until the end of the game when I'm like, I have a whole unit just sitting on the side of the table. Yeah, that you forgot about. Yep. Yeah, I uh, I hear you. I've done very similar things. All right, so a lot of this depends on me being able to move the butcher. 
If I can move the butcher, I can I can do this pretty well. Okay. So we're going to start with my soul stalker. It's going to advance. And it's going to advance in such a way to stay outside that other one's uh, melee range. Yep. Uh, it's going to go there. Yeah, I'm good with that. It's going to go there. It's going to make an attack on number five. Bonk. Uh, I believe a 12? 13. 13, so I miss. Perfect. Need a 7, so uh, with the bite attack, I miss. Buy an attack. Uh, we'll buy with the bite. I hit with the bite. Uh, it is P plus S15, so tough check. Use the fancy tough thing. My goodness. Oh. <laughs> Alright, I will buy an attack and kill him. <laughs> And Agathon gets a soul because uh, he is not within range of a Void Archon. Yep. I'm going to move all my models that died to the back. Sure. So I can keep track of who dies from what unit. Because last game, I had no idea. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's perfectly fine by me. Um, so that's the Soul Stalker. It has no more attacks it can make. Um, you are 17 inches away. I have to choose a model. Oh my goodness, so I didn't have to be within range. Check and check. So if I charge, I would have to charge that guy. Okay. So he can't do that. Check. Uh, we're going to go next with... Um, Yeah, I think this is the right call. Um, right? Is that the right call? My goodness. This turn is so hectic because I'm trying to... Oh my goodness. I'm trying to protect myself and... Yeah. Uh, Valen's going to charge the Doom Reaver. Uh, he's okay. speed 8. Uh, he has reposition, so I'm not going to change his facing. Um, mm -hmm. So he's going to get base to base with that Doom Reaver. Uh, I'm going to make an impact attack. I'm mat 8. A 12 will miss. I will try to hit you with my sword. A 15 is going to slap him in the face. <laughs> it's like a POW 16 on the sword. Alright. Anything that's stopping tough right now? Mm, oh, I... Uh, yes. I, for, I actually remembered my unit abilities. I have a wretch that has entropic force within five inches of that model. Um, so I do not, you do not get tough. Hey, look at that. I remembered one of my rules. Okay, so Valen has finished his movement there. He is going to repo three inches because he was not engaged by anything, correct? He was not engaged by anything. So he's gonna repo back to there. That wretch did not move yet. All right. How to engineer the rest of this turn. Whew. Um, I am making sure that the desolator... So a cool way to do line of sight, if you did not know this, is if you drag the, the model... Mm -hmm. you can do line of sight just like this. Like you can make that one edge a line of sight edge. Mm -hmm. So I can see, um, what's his name? Vlad. Vlad. Yep. From where I am. So you are 14.6 away. So if I charge, speed 5 up to 8. Um, 5 up to 8. Okay, well that's a thing. Neat. I wasn't expecting that. All right. Um, I'm gonna go with Runewood next. Runewood is gonna charge number three in green. Okay. Runewood is a speed six, so we can charge nine inches. 
I'm going to put it nine inches there. Again, reposition, so I'm not going to change facing. Um, I am within nine inches of Vlad, and I have Curse. Choose an enemy model slash unit in this model's command range. Friendly horrors get plus two attack rolls against the chosen model slash unit. Lasts for a turn. So I charge that guy. I can use this ability. Choose doesn't require line of sight. Yep. So I'm just going to choose Vlad. Uh, and then I'm going to make my attack with um, Runewood onto that Doom Reaver. Uh, Runewood's uh, Infernal Blade is Grievous Wounds as well. All right. So he is a 7, so I need a 6 to hit. I will hit. It is a P plus S 12, which is going to kill with a really big damage roll. Uh, before, can you cancel that move before you do that? Um, you are... 4.3, uh, you're within the Void Archon. It is all yours. You get the soul from the Void. It says Void Archon. Because I'm pretty sure you're way closer on the Void Archon. Yeah, 7.3. I was just making sure if my Soul Stalker took the soul at all. I got you. Um, I'm going to reposition Runewood 3 inches. Go be a roadblock. Not that's going to matter, because Apparition. All right. Um, next thing I have to do is get the Butcher out of the way. So to get the Butcher out of the way, I'm going to move the Shrieker. Six inches. Okay. I'm going to move the Shrieker six inches to there. The Shrieker is going to take a shot at the Butcher. The Butcher's a 13 in there, or is he higher? So he's base 14. Really? 16, yeah. Oh my god, he's got such a high defense. All right, we'll boost a shot into him. I need a 10. Uh, I have Isla Sight, so I think I need an 8. Uh, uh, yeah. Ignores Cloud Should Effects. No, I do not ignore Concealment. I ignore the clouds, but I do not ignore the concealment. So I do need a 10. Okay. Um, Interesting. I did this in the wrong order. Can I come back to the Shrieker? Yeah. It's going to go to that same spot. I just want to do something else first. No worries. So my cultist unit here mm -hmm. is going to go. of them. There's one more. They're in front of the gate. Yeah. Um, Orin is not going to be that deep. Orin's going to be, Orin needs to be canceled. Everyone else is fine. Orange is not. I need to switch up facing on one of them after this. Um, Aura size. Orange is an 8 or a 10. He's an 8. Uh, so 4.8... On a speed six gives point six left because it gives one point two to point six. Yep. So uh, it can go to five point four. Okay. I'm gonna turn the face like so. Um, this cultist is gonna turn its back on Orin. Um, one of these should not have dove in there. My apologies. One of them's going to be back here. Uh, Orin is going to cast an Annihilate at number six. All right. So it's going to hit. Uh, it is a three-inch AoE on top of them. 
and it is POW 10. So I need to roll anything buts. So I'm going to make five rolls uh, going from lowest to highest. Anything but. All of them die. And then this goes away. Oren gets five souls. Okay. That's all I had to do to fix um, that part. Uh, Dingy, yes, Isla Sight does ignore concealment, except the Shrieker doesn't have Isla Sight. Shrieker has True Sight. So the Shrieker is going to advance to that spot now. Yep. Shrieker is going to boost a hit. Um, I need a 10. Because you said you're a 14 to a 16. You need a 10. Yep. I hit with a 14. Now, when does his silly ability trigger? So if it is hit by an enemy attack at any time except while advancing after the attack is resolved, this model is pushed E3 inches in a direction determined by the deviation template. Perfect. So after your attack is resolved. Perfect. Um, so I have an ad, I have a admonisher hit. So D3 nearest models get hit. Uh, so it's two nearest models to him, which I think is Vlad and the objective. Yep. So Vlad takes a POW 10. Um, this is unboostable. Okay. That's uh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, All right. <laughs> okay. You said dice off six. Yeah. So you have the option of taking the armor or spending the focus to get rid of it completely. Uh, I'm going to... I don't even know at this point. That's that's um, a hard choice. I don't know what the right choice in this circumstance is. I mean, with the amount of stuff that I'm I'm seeing you as you move, that is going to be thrown at Vlad. It's a lot. Um, yeah, I yeah. think I'm and, just gonna take the take it, the damage and get the armor. Perfect. Yeah, you see you see all the stuff that's happening. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's still coming forward. Yeah. All right. So I hit the two of them. I'm going to uh, boost the damage roll on the Butcher, even though I know his armor's insane from this. Because um, yeah. he's Carapace, so he's, what, a 16 up to a 20? He's a, a 15 up to a 19. 15 up to a 19, perfect. Uh, I'm a POW 13, so this is off 6. Take one damage. And then we get to add a deviation template to you. So, um, I believe you get to place the numbers. How does this work? I actually turned by the deviation template. Can you choose the deviation template? So, wouldn't it be just like a regular deviation template where the origin of the attack? I don't recall. Um, I can do a quick rule search. If you give me a second. Uh, site privateer press forums .com, bud bath deviation bloodbath deviation. That doesn't tell me. Um, Give me another second. I can try to find something else. Uh, my goodness. Uh, okay. This is where I wish I had a, a way to look up rulings. Uh, <laughs> bloodbath. When using the deviation template, four should point towards the origin of the damage. So right on. So I will grab this and drag that on top of me. So four is pointed the correct direction now. All right. So now the cool thing is, if you wanted to, you can click the... Um, oh, the dice, and then there's a deviation thing. That's yeah, cool. and you can just deviate one of them and just put 
Um, you don't have to put anything in, then we can just figure it out after that. So you rolled a five, so it's going to go three inches to the six. Um, and he's pushed. That was probably the worst thing possible for me, is pushing him. Yeah, he pushes right up to the objective. That was probably the worst possible one I could have gotten. That's amazing. And that cloud moves too. That's amazing. Well done there. Uh, what facing would you like? Uh, I'm going to keep it. Keep facing that way. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> um, and that's uh, when he's an enemy attack. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that makes things interesting. How do I get around that? And I cannot damage your objective yet. My goodness, that was literally the worst possible place for that entire thing in the world. <laughs> I can't believe how lucky you got on that. That was insane. Yeah. yeah, that was literally the worst possible place it could have been. That's awesome. Okay, so now the question is where to put stuff. Okay, I'm just gonna start doing some measurements to try to proxy some of this stuff out. No worries. That's another thing I like about this too, is so easy to try to be able to proxy things and figure out what's gonna work. Mm -hmm. So if I helm out that guy, uh, you can charge eight inches. All right, so I think I can still do stuff. I just have to work a lot harder on it. Okay. <laughs> um, so. Four point six. 4.6 off of 8 leaves 3.4, which is 1.7. Uh, 4.6 plus 1.7 is uh, 5, 6.3. Oh my goodness, that blocks it. My gosh. That placement screwed over me completely. <laughs> All right, we're going to try something first before I stop giving up on this plan. Um, so that wretch is going to go there. It's going to give ancillary attack to the rat, or the Shrieker. The Shrieker is going to take another shot at Butcher. Okay. Uh, I need a 10. I will reroll it with a soul off of, a, of um, Orin. So I still need a 10. I miss it twice. That is fine. Uh, three inch move on the wretch to there. Okay. Hmm. Being base to base with that objective is making my life painful. Can't charge my own models. I 
totally need to Vlad's defense is 15? 15, 16. 15 down to 13 oh. from me, so I need a yep. 7. I'm okay risking it. Um, so my desolator here... Uh, I need to check something before I do that. Yes, that's still fine. Uh, the desolator is going to run around to that position. I have 10 inches of run. I've got way more than enough to make it. Okay. Um, going to run to there. This wretch is going to walk up behind him and cast ancillary attack. Uh, yeah, you're going to have Mighty Kings. Oh, you yep. have it already. You took damage. Yeah, yeah. Good call. Yep. Uh, spray template. Making sure. Okay. So targeting Butcher still gets Vladimir. That's all I really cared about. So the Desolator is going to make a spray attack. It targets the Butcher. Uh, yep. It gets both of them. Yep. So now I'm going to roll on the Butcher. You are a 14 because I do ignore the cloud this time. Yep. Uh, so I need an 8 to hit the Butcher. I hit. And I need a 7 to hit Vlad. I will reroll that with Orin. See why you killed that almost that entire unit now. Yep. <laughs> I will hit Vlad now. Uh, Vlad gets Withering Death, which is minus 2 armor. So. Back down to 16 then, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, so this is off six on Vlad. Take four damage. Okay. Unless you want to spend the focus on it. Um, okay. And then on the Butcher. Uh, he's a 19. Uh, he also is Withering Death. So he's down to a 17. Uh, take four. And then I'm going to reposition this wretch. Uh, no, my reposition occurs after your um, deviation. Oh my goodness, we have a whole bunch of stuff to do from this. Let me get rid of that spray somehow. I don't know if I can. It's fine. Uh... <laughs> I am on the four on top of my desolator. Yep. All right. Six inches to the three. Oh my goodness, it can move that way. Uh, so he goes three inches to the three. So what's the... Yeah. So he has about an inch. So he has half an inch. So he can yep. go 2.4. Can I fit a base through there? Oh my goodness. The perfect deviation. <laughs> Whew. Okay. So my spray template goes away. Your cloud comes back with you. And then my wretch is going to go three inches. Uh, do I even want to risk the butcher? killing a system. Uh, Butcher's damage roll is what? Uh, so he is Matt 9, PNS 16, Weapon Master. 16 Weapon Master against a 19, so off 3. If you take out my... If you take out my middle ring, I basically am in a real shit position. Okay. All right, continuing the engineering, because <laughs> that's what this game is all about for me right now. Mm -hmm. um, my goodness, do I just try to go for the assassination run with Agathon?
I'm going to run that to there. That's not within two of the butcher. You're 15, 16, effectively. Yep. I have three to four rerolls left. Five rerolls with Puppet Master. I'm just going to go ham. Um, because I can still charge through that gap if I need to, so I still have a backup plan. And I don't need to do... Do I need to do more? Uh, Gate's going to go. Gate's going to TK the um, Tormentor. And so I'm just... Uh, just making sure eight points. So you're eight point six away from there, so I can charge eight inches. So I should be point six from you. Um, we're gonna go that way, and then I can charge eight. So I should be able to go ten. Ten point seven. Go to eight point eight. I go straight towards you. Eight inches. Okay, so I can get there with a free strike from the butcher. So we will two inch place there. Eight point eight away. Um, the gate is not going to risk a shot at um, the butcher because you could deviate directly back into my annoyance <laughs> area. And that's literally the worst possible thing in the world that could happen. Um, so we're not going to do anything with that because, oh my god, would that, uh, would that be amazing for me to just, like, crap the bed that bad. Um, the hermit is going to go. The Hermit is just going to advance forward five inches to here. It's going to pulse for Essence. So Agathon gets one. Regna gets one. The Shrieker gets one. And nothing else that doesn't have max Essence is within range. And then it's going to reposition three inches to there. Okay. Roger is going to go. Jay's going to go six inches over here, face Agathon, Harmonus, and then three inch repo to there. Or Harmonious, however you spell it or say it. Okay. So I think the attempt now is just to nuke you to death first and then torment you afterwards. I think that is a valid plan. So, um,. Regna is going to go next. Ooh, that guy is not closer than Orin. That sucks. I placed that cultist wrong. Good job, me. Um, we'll go with Agathon. Agathon's going to feed. Um, Agathon's going to go through the number one arc node and shoot a dark fire for one into Vlad. So Harmonist drops, Dark fires this. I am a 9, you're a 15, I need a 6. I will hit with an 8. Uh, I didn't grab enough dice, but whatever. Um, this is a P plus S 12 to your 16 after everything, correct? Because you're yeah. a 16 up to an 18. Two. Yep, plus 2 minus 2, absolutely. So it's off 4. I'm just going to hard roll it. So I get three dice, drop whichever one I choose. So the die roll up top is going to look super weird. We can't rely on it for the numbers. Okay? Right. So uh, first damage roll is a 10. So I'm going to, we said it was off four. Um, yep. I'm going to drop the two. So that's an eight. So you take four damage. Or choose to spend focus. Let me 
just take the four. Okay. I'm going to cast it again. Okay. So it costs two. Now three dice. I'm going to hit with an 11. Off four again is I'm going to take the two sixes this time. Uh, so yep. it's a eight damage. Yep. So I'm going to burn the focus. So I'm going to take three. So you're going to go into two. Okay. I'm going to cast it again. Yeah, so I spent all that time engineering that thing, and yeah, because I spiked that damage roll super high. Um, six and nine is going to hit a 15, so I don't have to re-roll it. And then the damage roll, uh, eight minus four is four, and you have, what, two health left? That'll, that'll get him unless you have tough. I don't think you have tough, do you? No. So that's Agathon. Yeah, that's gross. I'm sorry, buddy. Is what it is. Yeah, when you dropped, if you had camped three or five, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do that. When I did the wind blast, I thought it would just put out the cloud and the fire. It didn't wouldn't remove the whole thing. Oh, so I thought the bubble would be there. I was gonna run my dudes in, and they were gonna sit and be, yeah, uh, at seventeen. So as soon as you took the whole thing away, I was like, I miscalculated and fucked up. Yeah, because uh, yeah, um, so the ruling on that works. Um, I'm sorry I didn't clarify that before you did it. I should have asked. My apologies as well. Um, is the train is both types at the same time combined? Mm -hmm. So when you remove a temp a part of it, you remove the whole thing. So it's um, you don't just remove the cloud effect from it. It gets rid of the rubble. It gets rid of the building. It gets rid of the acid. Whatever's on it, um, it gets rid of. So, but yeah, when you went down to one focus, I'm like, oh, sweet. I can attempt an assassination run at this point because that when you drop below three ish focus, um, the odds become really, um, swingy for me where it becomes really, uh, suitable for, to go for the assassination run. Just so you're aware in the future. Uh, calculations on this, um, I gave you four points, and you gave me ten, because I didn't kill a full unit, and zero, zero. So yeah, that was, that's a game. So... Thank you for, very much for the game. I'm sorry it uh, ended it at the top of two like that. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh my god. I honestly, after like trying to like learn your like look at your list and figure out what they were, I was like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And I'm just gonna play and see what happens. So. Absolutely. And you saw like I had two different assassination runs queued up at the same time. And it's like I could bounce between either of them, so it's really hard to to prep against this kind of thing, where it's like, okay, if you stepped within this much distance, um, this is what it does. And it's like, okay, what what distance do you need to stay out of? Because this tormentor, say this desolator wasn't there, this tormentor can still get pulled this way another inch and still come forward like nine inches. So it's like for you to be safe, you need to be something like here, which yeah, is I don't that way. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's what's hard about it is I don't play that way either. And it's so difficult to be like, I need to stay at the, the kill box line. And it's like, I don't want to stay at the kill box line. I want my caster to do something. And so, like, that's why this list is just ridiculous because it's it does bullshit stuff like that where it just goes around and does radical weirdness. So, um, in the future, I'd love to get more games in with you because it it's yeah. So we can definitely play stuff for you to learn more about Infernals as well. I'd be down. Absolutely excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go get some dinner. So I hope you a good night. I'll report our game to uh, Brian. And good luck in the rest of the tournament, sir. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Um, I'll talk to you later, buddy. Yep. Bye.
All right, chat. Um, that was the game. Um, I that butcher almost screwed me over. Um, yeah, so that's why Zerkova's a better answer into what was happening because Vlad gives me the chance to assassinate, and Zerkova does not. Um, I have to do like I could hellmouth a whole bunch of stuff to try to kill Zerkova, and it's a lot harder. So, um, but yeah. So that's that's one way that Agathon wins games is just by uh, deciding to nuke a million times into everything, and it was a good game, uh, anticlimactic and disappointing, I'm sure. But um, he still played very well, and so I'm looking forward to playing him again. So I will be back at ten. We're gonna continue painting our Revenger and Hunter. Um, thank you everyone who came hanging out. Uh, Turbo Nitro Monkey, absolutely, and the software is really cool. Um, so, um, thank you everyone for coming out and watching and seeing how Agathon uh, can play into stuff like this. And I will be back at 10 uh, p.m. Central Daylight Time uh, at this channel. Uh, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs if you subbed. Um, I did see someone subbed earlier, uh, 24 Hour Gaming Geek, who subbed. So, I appreciate it. Um, Everyone have a fantastic night. Um, be well. S please remember to stay socially distant because um, I firmly believe that the pandemic is still going on. And unless you're in a country that has it under control, um, highly advise staying well and staying safe. And we will chat with you all later. So thank you very much. Have a great, fantastic night. Thank you for watching.